You know, in lieu of the recent things that have been going down with J.K. Rowling on the internet and just allegations left and right about everyone, it really made me want to make a video about separating the art from the artist, or rather, the art of separating art from the artist. That's a lot of fucking arts. And more so, I want to come at this in an angle that I was thinking about that I haven't heard talked much about, and it's a little thought experiment that I want to do with you guys. You guys can be my guinea pigs, and I'll just apply some food for thought. And that is, where exactly is the line drawn, or the philosophy of separating the art from the artist? Because that term, even though it is a very widely used term that has occurred in the recent time we live in, it has pretty much existed for the longest time, because since the dawn of time, people had to sort of agree or disagree with a certain artist or singer or musician or composer or writer or philosopher or teacher's opinions and come to the conclusion if they want to support that or not. The only difference is in the modern age, people are put in front of you at such an alarming rate that if you are into a celebrity and with everyone having these warped interpersonal relationships, relationships with said celebrities, every human is going to have skeletons in the closet. The only difference is the celebrities that are put in front of you or just social media personalities, when you start digging into their social media and you start listening to their opinions, just like any other human with a platform, they're probably, chances are, gonna have some skeletons in the closet or things you don't agree with. But I wanted to talk about where the line is drawn. And this is sort of where I'm going to, you know, impromptu philosophies. Every human is supposed to have this well-ingrained truth of right from wrong, and generally speaking, everyone has a limit. Everyone has some morals that they live by. They have a certain definition of the things that they conclude in their own mind, in their own heart, is right versus wrong, either by being taught that or learning it naturally. It is just part of the human condition to, generally speaking, condemn certain things, condemn certain actions, and I would like to think that most humans condemn things like, you know, murder or rape. You know, we're really lowering the bar to the lowest standard, the bare fucking minimum here. But is that really lowering the bar when you take into account art, something that is subjective, something that is personal, something that is meaningful to thousands, if not millions, or tens of millions of people. And I know for a fucking fact that metal gets a horrible rep of having horrible people and people that are controversial and have murdered people or sing about satanic rituals or whatever it is. There is not a genre that doesn't have people in it that have been condemned that are horrible and people have to separate the art from the artist. Whether you look at hip-hop, look at Chris Brown, look at R. Kelly, look at any of the gangster rappers from the 2000s and 2010s, especially in the cloud rap sphere that did horrible things. Look at people like XXXTentacion, look at people like YNW Melly. And don't even get me started on like pop artists that have had allegations. Michael Jackson had some of the highest forms of allegations that anyone could ever have against him on media publications and talk shows and an entire fucking documentary. But you still see Michael Jackson selling tens of millions of copies a year of his albums. J.K. Rowling, someone that is literally the creator of the highest selling book series of all time. You see all the people boycotting Hogwarts Legacy, but what exactly does that really do? You're not hurting J.K. Rowling and her fucking tens of billions of dollars. The only people that you are hurting by boycotting the production of that game are the producers that worked on it, are the writers and the animators and the story writers. J.K. Rowling, I genuinely promise, despite having an iron fist over the Hogwarts franchise, does not care whether or not you buy or play Hogwarts Legacy. I hate to break it to you, I hate to burst your bubble, but consider it burst. And here's where I diverge. Here's where we go into the philosophizing even further. Where is the line drawn and are those morals of right and wrong truly something that can be believed? Really something that can even be contextualized or put into a box or even defined properly? Because yes, it's easy to say certain things like, okay, you don't support someone who kills someone. 
There are plenty of people who still listen to rappers who have killed people. There are still millions of metalheads who die by the name Varg Verkenis. The entire Norwegian black metal scene is full of murderers and church burners, but you still see massive support for them. If you want to go into the metalcore niche, look at Tim from As I Lay Dying. But I think that in general, when you think of separating the art from the artist, it comes up mostly in the extreme forms. It comes up in the form of, you know, like people who kill people, people who rape people, pe people that are just the worst of the worst, pedophiles, people who just commit the most heinous of actions. But I guarantee that there are people that don't separate the art from the artist and choose not to listen to or support in the most purest of definitions music solely because of what they believe in. And that's the thing is separating the art from the artist for a hateful reason or a reason that is genuinely detrimental or just marginalizing someone or a group of people any more valid or invalid than doing that because someone murdered someone. If someone doesn't want to listen to the band Oceano because they have a black frontman or Seven Dust because they have a black frontman, is that not inherently a racist thing if they are separating the art from the artist but just choose not to separate the art from the artist because they just don't want to listen to something fronted by a black man? If you don't like liturgy, but not because of the music, but because Hunter Hunt Hendrix is trans, or if you don't like 100 Gex, the hyperpop band, because Laura Less is trans, if you swear off listening to Judas Priest because Rob Halford is gay, if you swear off listening to Demi Borgir or Behemoth because they have very hateful anti-Christian messaging in it, do you guys see what I mean here by the rabbit hole just goes deeper and deeper into the fucking crust of the earth and then completely flip the script and turn it on its head? What if you only listen to satanic sort of music and swear off all Christian music solely because you just don't like the messaging and you can't stand to listen to something with a Christian messaging. My big question here in this video is, where's the line drawn between separating the art from the artist and preference? Because I think in modern terminology and modern language, those two have just overlapped so much and muddied in this haze that it's hard to tell when someone's genuinely separating the art from the artist because of a dangerous or hateful part of that artist or band that just makes them not want to to support or add more credibility to said artist or band, and then people who just have a preference with lyrics or some the way someone looks or the way someone sounds or what their core beliefs are. You can agree with something and agree with their beliefs, but it not be considered, oh, you're going along with the artist itself or supporting the artist and vice versa. Because in the end, like I said at the start of the video, Every human has their flaws. Every human has their imperfections. And if you line up 10 people, they're all going to have very different outlooks on things. But it comes down to the person listening or reading or watching if they choose to support said thing. And sort of like that guilty pleasure video I made recently, it seems like separating the art from the artist has become a term that is tossed around loosely anytime you disagree or agree with someone's preferences or lack thereof. When in reality, I think that that term should be exclusively used for things that are genuinely just condemnable. But that's the thing. It's gray area because there are always going to be people that just agree to disagree and listen to it or support it regardless. Because like I made the comparison about Varg Verkinis, there are still millions, if not tens of millions of metalheads that not only know that name, but support that name and die on the hill of Varg Verkinis, and he is a fucking former neo-Nazi that started a neo-Nazi coalition in prison for murdering someone and burning down churches, and he is still fucking praised on the mountain of people, and they don't consider it separating the art from the artist, but God forbid people stop supporting Gaul in the black metal scene because he's gay, and that's just just acceptable. All I gotta say is, in the realm of psychology, y'all motherfuckers need to research cognitive dissonance because some of you have it in terms of just how you're meshing these terms up. Because honestly, you know what the funny part about that is? I'm engaging in the same thing that I'm saying. This all is a subjective debate because if you think about it, no line is the same. And if you line up a thousand people and ask them where their moral compass is with certain issues, yeah, you may have some people that are maybe adjacent to each other, 
but I guarantee you're going to have a lot of wide different diverging opinions that are going to come from a lot of different directions and have personal opinions interlaced within them. But regardless, I want to hear what you guys think on this topic of separating the art from the artist. Where is the line drawn and do you even like using that term and if so, in what context do you think that it's valid, that it's valuable? Otherwise though, I'll stop ranting. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to join the review family today and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You know who it is. My name is Jay Morris and I'm signing off saying farewell.